Hi, I'd like to uh, tell you a little bit about the English concertina and how I came to start playing it. Uh, I started playing the Melodeon, uh, another squeeze box instrument, uh, in 2011. And after about a year of that, um, I decided to try the concertina. Um, <clears throat> after a bit of research, I decided that the one I wanted to play was the English concertina. And so I posted a want ad on Melodeon.net which is the forum for Melodian players worldwide. Um, to my amazement, I was contacted by a lovely guy in the United States uh, called Frank, who uh, announced he was gonna give me his English concertina. I couldn't believe it. Uh, I made several blogs and lessons on the Melodian, and this was his way of expressing his gratitude to me for doing that. Uh, so I was totally amazed and uh, such kindness in this day and age is fairly unheard of, isn't it? So it's a really lovely thing that happened to me. And sure enough, a few days later uh, in the post came this really lovely Jackie Treble English concertina. So I've been playing this concertina um, ever since alongside my other squeeze boxes. Um, and I don't know if you know, but there are different types of concertinas. Um, the main ones are the Anglo, uh, which is uh, like the Melodian in the sense that, that you get different notes on the push and the pull of the bellows, um, and that's called bisonoric. There's a duet concertina, we have the same notes on both sides, but they're an octave apart. But unlike the Anglo, this is unisonoric, meaning that you get the same note uh, when you press the button regardless whether you're pushing or pulling the bellows. And the third main type is one like this, an English, uh, which is fully chromatic. That means you get all the notes, all the sharps, uh, all the flats, all the white notes, if you like, on the piano. And just like the duet, uh, this has the same notes on the push and the pull. So it is also unisonoric. If you can leave music, all the notes on the lines of the treble clef uh, are found on the left side of the instrument and all the notes that you can find on the spaces of the treble clef are found on the right side of the instrument. Uh, this was the first type of concertina invented by Charles Wheatstone in 1829. Uh, there are several subdivisions of English concertinas. For instance, you can get a baritone uh, version of this instrument, which is exactly the same, uh, but uh, that is an octave lower. That's called a jack, this is called a jackie, uh, and that's great if you want to play, uh, if you want to accompany yourself singing. But this jackie uh, treble concertina is fantastic for playing tunes. With a bit of practice, you can start introducing other notes alongside the tune to give yourself a little harmony or bass. Uh, but probably when you start, you'll be playing just single note melody lines, which is, you know, which is fine and it's also really good fun. So to the arrangement of the buttons. Well, the instrument has got four horizontal rows. Uh, and there's one there, second one there, third one there, fourth one there, and this and exactly the same here. First, second, third, and fourth row along there. Uh, the middle two rows carry all the notes found in the key of C major. So these two rows here, and these two rows here, carry the notes of C major. So if I play those notes from lowest to highest, you'll hear. And then the highest note is that really high C, and I started on that low G. So that's the range. From a low G up to that high C. The buttons are on the first row, the top row and the bottom row. They contain all the, the sharps and the flats, if you like, the black notes on the piano. So that's sort of the arrangement of the buttons. Now this concertina has got 30 buttons, so you get 30 different notes. As I say, ranging from low G, uh, the G below middle C, up to the C, which is two octaves above middle C. And I find that I can play all the tunes that I want to use in its range. You can also get 48 and 56 button models when the notes go even higher. But so far, 
um, I found that this 30 button model has given me all the notes that I've needed to play the tunes that I figured out. So it's been absolutely fine. Now there are a couple of ways of distributing the fingers over the buttons, but most beginners start in the following way. For both hands, finger one is used to play the top two rows. It's this row and this row. Uh, finger two plays the third row down. Finger three plays the fourth row down. The same with this hand. Finger one deals with these top two rows. Finger two deals with this row and finger three deals with this uh, bottom row. So if you look at the concertina, if you're holding it properly, you'll see the rows are horizontal. And uh, I call row one the row nearest to the thumb strap and row four the row nearest to the uh, finger rest. So at this stage, you only use the little fingers to hold the instrument up. You don't actually use the little fingers to play the buttons. Um, more advanced players, uh, do use all four fingers of uh, both hands to actually press the buttons down to play notes. Uh, the way I hold the instrument is with my legs crossed, hopefully you can see that, um, it's my left leg over my right leg and I place the right hand of the instrument, right hand end of the instrument, it's very important to say, over the top of my left knee and then you place only the first section, the first, up to the first joint of your thumb, into the thumb straps. So don't go right in, just enough, just up to sort of the first joint. Hold it lightly. Okay, and the little fingers of both hands uh, go underneath these little finger rests. In this way, when I play, uh, the right side of the concertina is static, so this side is static and this side moves in and out. And of course you can reverse that if you like, you can put the left end on your knee uh, and then you can make the left side static and pull the right side in and out. Um, there are other ways to hold the instrument, uh, including one using a neck strap, but uh, I wouldn't really recommend that and I found that this way I hold it uh, works really well for me. And if I find my thumb of my right hand getting a bit tired and I just swap over. One thing you mustn't do is place the bellows um, over the leg because uh, the bellows will wear very very quickly with the constant rubbing on your trousers or, or on your skirt if you're a lady so never rest the bellows or play with the bellows on your leg it's the end either end on the leg, but not the bellows. As far as I'm aware, the air button, which is this button here on the right hand side, is only used to open and close the bellows at the start of a piece or at the start or end of a practice session. And it's not incorporated in the, in the actual playing of the instrument uh, like the air button is when you're playing a melodeon. Okay, I tend to sort of start with the bellows closed, but you can of course and hear the air gun uh, coming in there you can start with them open. So how does it work? Well, very, very simply and very briefly, opening the bellows lets air in and closing them uh, lets air out. So when you do this, whilst pressing the note buttons, the instrument sounds as the flow of air causes the reeds inside to vibrate. Uh, this instrument is fully polyphonic, so you can play lots of notes at the same time. You can play chords. So if I play these three buttons here, I don't know if you can see that there. And here I'm playing a chord, three simultaneous notes. It's actually a chord of C major, so it is possible to play chords in this way. Um, I usually start my pieces with the bellows closed, but of course you can uh, alternatively play, start your pieces with the bellows fully open. It's entirely up to you. And I tend to plan my pieces in music so that I um, play four bars while I'm opening the bellows and four bars when I'm closing the bellows or if you like a phrase while I'm opening and then the next phrase when I'm closing. Try and make it even. The bellows control the volume and the expression of the instrument. Some people call the bellows the soul of the instrument. That's quite a good way of uh, thinking of them. And I, I always uh, equate the bellows to your lungs when you're singing. If you run out of breath uh, when you're trying to sing, 
you're not going to be able to make much of a good sound. And of course, with this instrument, if the bellows are closed, nothing happens. Of course, once the bellows have fully opened, I'll just open them right out, of course, you've got no option but to start closing them again. Uh, otherwise, you're not going to be able to make any sound. So, bellows control is very, very important and it's something you need to work on uh, quite hard. If you do run out of air, you can always reverse the direction as you get uh, the same notes in both directions. Uh, but try and plan ahead so that doesn't happen. I mean, you can reverse the bellows mid-phrase, but you're going to notice it. It's not ideal, but in an emergency, um, you can do it. I've certainly done it from time to time. Um, as far as the way you sit, well, I'm sitting pretty upright. Um, you should be relaxed and as comfortable as possible when you play. Of all the squeeze boxes I've tried, this English concertina certainly uh, puts the least strain on the human body. You definitely don't want to spend too long practicing when you're a beginner, uh, because if you do, you're gonna find yourself straining your thumb joints. Um, and of course, if you keep on playing uh, in that situation, you're going to do yourself some uh, long-lasting, maybe even permanent damage. So basically the rule is, if it starts to hurt, stop, have a break, come back to it. But if you're nice and relaxed and you're holding the instrument properly, uh, you shouldn't find too many aches and pains with uh, this concertina. If you don't currently own a concertina, I strongly suggest that you buy one from a reputable dealer. A lot of instruments that you can pick up on eBay um, they need work doing to them and that work can run into you know quite a lot of money because there's very few people in the world who are expert on these things. Uh, if you look on Melodian.net or Concertina.net on the internet uh, you'll hopefully, hopefully be able to find a suitable dealer in your country who can uh, supply um, uh, an instrument for you and also of course if you happen to do buy an instrument uh, that has got some problems again I wouldn't recommend tinkering it yourself. They're pretty complicated inside. Um, unless you know what you're doing, again, I would strongly recommend taking your instrument to the dealer and um, suffering the, uh, the expense of getting it repaired properly because uh, you might end up doing more harm than good if you open the thing up and start fiddling about. If possible, I would always say borrow one uh, to start with to see if you like it before you commit to buying because uh, obviously these things are fairly expensive they range from a few hundred pounds to a few thousand. So it's, you know, it's not a particularly cheap hobby, I would say. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, interesting and useful. Uh, be sure to check out my other uh, Constantina videos on YouTube. In particular, um, I've devised a form of tablature which will get you up and running very quickly, whether you're a music reader or not. Uh, and you'll see me using this, this new tab in my Constantina videos. So anyway, um, I'll see you in the next video.